Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're talking about rice and the rice long-term storage. And I'm telling you that I'm giving up one of the methods of storing rice for good. And I'll explain to you the reason in a minute. If you guys are new to the channel of your prepper, you already know that rice is absolute must and it's number one priority for any prepper to have in a pantry. It does hold its nutritional value and the texture for up to 30 years with a proper storage. So it's absolutely no surprise that the rice is number one and we're all striving to have as much of it as possible in our pantries. So when we come down to storage, guys, as we know, it is super important to make sure that your rice is properly stored to make sure it is safe for you to consume many, many years down the line, especially if you're aiming to um, store this for a good 10 years or 30 years, depending on what you're preparing for, um, then yes, it's super, super important. So if you know the channel, guys, okay, you know how I do my rice preparedness if you wish and I've done many videos how I mallet bag and vacuum pack the rice but generally I have three type pantries if you easy wish uh, we have the short term or imminent sort of things in the kitchen I have a middle term pantry and I have a long term pantry storage that includes everything being kept in the mallet bags so for example when we are talking about rice this is my kitchen um, kitchen jar that lives in the cupboard then when I buy some extra rice guys it comes in in obviously normal bags. It goes into a specific allocated place as a quarantine to make sure nothing manifests before it goes in then into my pantry. And then guys, obviously I get to freeze the rice and then I either vacuum seal the rice or I mallet bag it with the oxygen absorber. So the little story guys, a literally few weeks back, I've had a hissy fit because I picked up one of my Asda's bag of rice that was Mylar bagged, uh, vacuum packed, sorry, and it had some mites in it. And they are literally so, so tiny, but because the packaging of the Asda thing is like yellowy or orange in some instances, they were kind of like a brownie color. They were easily spotted. So the fact was, guys, that my bag that was initially vacuum sealed, the rice was in it that was frozen for a few days. And I think I normally freeze in between four to five days. And then it was vacuum packed. When I've looked through and I came across that bag, the vacuum seal was broken and those bags were in basically in the bottom here. So I'll put the picture down for you to have a look. And they were still alive. So that brings me down to the question, guys, right? The rice has been frozen. Like they all, we all think they seem to be freezing the rice. It's meant to be solving the problem of getting rid of bugs in the eggs. Well, I've done some research, okay? And technically, yes, this is the case. And the temperature of your freezer must be at least minus 18 to be able to kill all the bugs and eggs in it. Well, my freezer, chest freezer that I've put the rice in, it was set on the minus 24, and yet I still had an issue. So it made me wonder, okay, those either guys were already inside the rice and they survived the freezer, or they came out from the outside somewhere and basically chewed through the bag and hence I lost the vacuum seal and then they were fighting their way to get to the rice inside because they were kind of in between. So the other coming in or they were going. Because that was an isolated case and I've checked all of the other rice that were close together, I haven't had any single one touch wood that had the same issue. So my suggestion or my assumption is that those things have survived the rice in a freezer, okay? Or there is another possibility, right? When I was talking to people and people say, it's obviously you freeze your rice, okay? And they suggest you, yes, between two and five days. So I normally go with the maximum, okay? Because time allows, have the space, I freeze them there and that's great. And then you take the rice out. And somebody actually asked me, well, how do you actually know when your rice is totally dry? Because you take it out within, after probably a couple hours, you will find that it looks like it's dry. However, how do you actually know? Well, you don't. That's the whole thing. It might look too dry, but as we know, rice actually absorbs moisture. And that's why reason, many reasons, guys, if you like used to spill a water on your phone or other sort of uh, mechanical device, you can shove in the rice and it actually helps to draw the moisture out. So that's the point. So the rice, we don't know when the rice is totally dry. So you might think, well, okay, well, I'm just gonna let it sit for, you know, for a week or so or two weeks. It doesn't kind of matter. But it kind of actually also does matter, guys, because if it sits, if it sits there in a the pantry or whatever you put to dry it, unless you physically take it out, or even if you don't, you won't know 100% that it's dry. And secondly, whilst it's gonna sit, which I used to also do, 
after being in a freezer, it will sit somewhere in a warm area. Again, that gives us an opportunity, not us, but gives the bugs opportunity to come back straight into your bag. And even though after, even if you've done this and froze it in those bags, right? Because they're so, so tiny, they'll eat through obviously a tiny, tiny hole. And it would probably take, I would imagine, with a really minute micro hole, it's probably gonna take a good two, three weeks for the bag to actually deflate, for you to actually realize that there is a puncture in the bag. So do you see where I'm coming from? And guys, I'm sure this is probably an isolated case, but as a prepper, I was really, really worried. I had to get everything out again and check, make sure, because I only done my pantry check not that long ago, but the fact is that I was panicking, okay, because I bought a lot of rice, I still continuously buy rice for my long-term storage, but that created a bit of a panic, and I was really, really upset, because if you can imagine going through all this effort, how long it takes us to, you know, I have to occupy a lot of space in the freezer, just to, you know, to make sure that we kill all the bugs for the for the, uh, for the long-term storage. And then obviously there's the bags and there's the whole thing that is now I have a worry that potentially this, this scenario and how that worked, it wasn't good enough. So I don't know, and I would like to hear if any of you ever had any of those issues with the bugs coming through and manifesting themselves after you froze and go through all of this um, scenario. I always say to you, and if you, again, if you follow, you know, always quarantine your stuff, always wipe your packets, like wipe the rice, make sure nothing's on it, you know, before you sort of put it together with your other dry goods. But the fact is that those mites or any sort of weevils, they can just appear from, from your window, from anywhere. You don't have to have infestation in your pantry for them just to come in and just hop over just from the window and just pop in and find a way to eat your bleeding rice. So anyway, the moral of the story, guys, I no longer will be storing my rice in a vacuum sealer bag. I just, unfortunately, just put a really bitter taste in my mouth. And to be fair, just check it. I know many of us do, and I've been advising this for as long as I've been doing the prepping videos because it's a really cost-effective way of doing that, okay? Because the bags are cheap, you know, you don't need to worry about the oxygen absorbers, but they're not foolproof and clearly they're not bug-proof. So this is that. So my advice, well, not my advice, but it's obviously it's up to you guys what you do. And I'm pretty sure many of you have been storing this for years and absolutely had no issue, but I had a problem and I wanted to share this with you because the whole idea is a prepping community, guys, that we share experiences and things and we hopefully learn from each other. So if one of you, even if you just prompt you to come and check your stuff and make sure nothing's there, then it's good enough for me. But I felt it was really important for me to share this with you because I was really, really upset and frankly, not particularly happy. So anyway, so my way forward now, guys, is a similar bag in for not just for long term, but for the medium term as well, as I said. So every time rice will come in, it's going to be obviously disinfected, goes in the quarantine. It goes, I have to invest in a couple more of the imminent sort of jars rather than the bags. And then the rest, unfortunately, going to be mallet bagged without freezing. I'm not even going to be bothered wasting my time or freezer space and freezing them because it's, it's still, for me, it's a high possibility that could have potentially survived inside that because they're so, so tiny. And it's a little bit more of a... Um, not say unknown research guys, but it's very little research there in terms of how long they could survive. And they say they technically should die minus 18, but they might not. And they clearly might able to survive like minus 24. So it may be four or five days is not enough neither anyway. But the point is though, because we're talking about the mylar bags and oxygen absorbers, um, obviously oxygen will take, um, Oxygen will be removed in mylar bags with the oxygen absorber and nothing can live without oxygen, okay? Well, this is just how it goes, especially it's brick hard. We can see 100% everything's been taken out of that. And if for any reason those little creatures manage to munch through the bag, well, they have managed somehow, uh, that is, I'll be absolutely doubtful that they can manage uh, to munch through the really thick mylar bags. And my longer, longer term mylar bags are super thick and shiny. There's no way they can eat through that. So there we have it. Anyway, so yes, sorry guys. I felt like I really wanted to bring this out to your attention. And yes, so my new prepping goal, not a goal really, but new prepping process of storing rice is now only involves mylar bags, oxygen absorbers, no freezer. And I'm not going to be bothered with those bags anyway. So Sorry for ranting on, guys. I really needed to share this. Um, hopefully you liked the video or find this helpful. Please comment below if you have any issues with this kind of storage whatsoever. As I said, I'm sure like thousands of you, millions of you, or maybe everybody never had an issue, but for some reason I did. So anyway, 
So I'm going to stop talking now. Thank you for watching uh, and I'll see you next one. Bye bye.